All right, we're in this patient's right shoulder. This is the subacromial space. So above us is the acromion, uh, and this is the humerus. So this we call a subacromial space through here. So this is what a massive chronic retracted rotator cuff tear looks like. So this is the humerus. You can see this big gaping hole right here. Um, this is the cuff. Um, so we typically define a massive tear when the cuff is retracted to the level of the glenoid. So there you can see the shoulder joint. If you're in the subacromial space, you shouldn't be able to see the actual glenohumeral articulation because the rotator cuff should cover, up, cover it up. So this is supraspinatus and infraspinatus. And this is where those tendons should be suppressing the humeral head and creating a barrier uh, to the glenohumeral joint. So this is a massive retracted rotator cuff tear and you can see how atrophic this tissue looks. Additionally, there's the muscle. So we should have cuff tissue, rotator cuff tendon from about here to here. Uh, and there you can see the start of the actual muscle of supraspinatus. So this is gonna be a tough one. Uh, my plan here is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring cuff tissue from the front over here uh, to some of this decent looking tissue in the back. I'm gonna tie some side to side sutures here. And then what we're gonna do is place an anchor about as laterally as I can get it, which is gonna be quite medial. Uh, and then we're gonna bring all of this tissue down after I've reapproximated it here, back over onto the humerus over here uh, to hopefully provide some coverage of the humeral head and, and, and allow this rotator cuff to function a little bit normally suppressing the humeral head. But this is a massive chronic rotator cuff tear here of the shoulder. All right, time to get to work. Okay, so part one is over. I used two sutures here to reapproximate uh, the two sides. I brought the anterior cuff over to meet sort of some of the posterior cuff tissue, which is decent. Um, and now the tear looks a little bit more manageable. It's kind of a more ordinary shape. Uh, I've got my, this is, I call this the torpedo. Um, which is kind of good because what's really important for these tears is to is to release the tissue because oftentimes adhesions are formed between the cuff and um, the underlying bone back in here. So this sort of torpedo shaped uh, shaver allows me to get in under it and perform my releases of this cuff tissue because uh, you got to release it if you want to get it back where it's supposed to be over here because it's been back there for a long time. Um, so we, we get in there with this. I've also established an anterior portal here, uh, which allows me to get back in this with good angle and access some of this decent cuff tissue here. Uh, so now we're gonna get to work, part two. We're gonna use some suture anchors, pass some horizontal matcher sutures um, from all the way at the back here, around to the front, and then we're gonna bring them out and try and get this cuff back over here. This is how we drill our anchors. This is the guide, that's the drill going in. Yep. And this is the anchor going into place. You can sort of hear it there. Very good. And here's it coming out. And there you can see the anchor. I'm going to give that a tug. And you can really see how strong that is. Okay, so we got two anchors here. One's more anterior over there. And this is our posterior anchor. That's going to allow us to fix the cuff now. Okay, part 3A is done. We've passed horizontal mattress 1 with the white and then blue uh, with our posterior anchor, which you can see all the suture there going through the cuff. Now we're going to start working away at these anterior anchors, which is going to fill up that space there. So we're going to have four horizontal mattress sutures in total, uh, and then we're going to bring them out laterally and see what we can do. But that's 3A complete. We're on to 3B here. Okay, so 3B is complete. There you can see our posterior anchor and our anterior anchor in the front. I've passed uh, four horizontal mattress sutures. These are all the sutures from the posterior aspect of the cuff, which I've brought out anteriorly there. And we're going to try place them about there, hopefully bringing all of this posterior tissue more anteriorly, kind of like that, to give us coverage of the humeral head. Show you how we did that in a sec here. This is our tap going in, which creates threads for our anchor. So once the anchor's in, you can see some of that bone marrow, fatty looking tissue, which is what we want. That's this hollow architecture anchor. So there you can see it there. It allows bone marrow to leak out to help with healing of the cuff tissue. Okay, I'll take cutter.
And the last thing we do is cut the suture, as you can see there. Okay, this is the tap again here for our posterior lateral row anchor. Creates threads for the actual anchor. And there's our anchor coming in. Take tension off, find our hole, drop it in there, check our tension. That looks pretty good. Hold that. Again, last thing here is we cut our suture flush. Good. And then we have a look at our repair. So final look at our repair there. You can see the two side-to-side -side sutures, posterior anchors brought up there into that lateral row, anterior anchors over there brought out into this lateral row. Humeral head covered. That looks pretty good. Okay, final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this a little bit of biology, laying this collagen patch over top of our repaired tissue right about there. The junction between the tendon and the interface, just to give it a little bit of a better chance of incorporating and healing. And I think if we put that right there, it's got a good chance. So that looks good.